joints on the left Live in the hills, but I still get a spread Something for the live, but I still reinvest it Fear how I feel, then it feel less a blessing I just want the lesson, I just want protection I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression Farming never plans if he waits for perfection I Think it to the uh, down, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in October 25th, 2021, and the stock market is going to go crazy. We have the busiest earnings week of the season. You're going to be getting Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, and if you remember what we saw on Friday, a lot of companies got clapped because of Snapchat and those expectations, so a lot of people are worried. But then on the other front, we got a ton of economic data. We're going to be getting even the PCE, and then the Fed comes the week after this so depending on how we position it could get very exciting so we got a lot to talk about i'm gonna go over everything that happened over the weekend there was a lot of different events all of the plays that we're looking at we made a couple of plays on friday but then leading into this week it is gonna be action-packed again there is a ton of companies reporting so we got the plays and then everything else we need to watch for the rest of the week so let us not delay you guys know what you need to do chop your thumbs up on the video make sure subscribe and if you don't know we are live monday through friday 30 minutes for open it's the first link in the description and it's pinned in the comments we better see you there in the morning it's free 99 it costs you nothing to join youtube.com slash the stack market you can post the play see the plays watch the watch us come to life and yes if you know how to control your expectations based on the logic of not having any logic then yeah we're the place to be and the most important thing you need to do. Post your watch below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to chat, baby. And my friend, I bid you not to forget about the random account generator. Today is Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. That's usually how it works. But this is the random account generator. We started it with $500. We need your help here. All we ask is you post a random play in the comments. Make sure it's an option. And below $100, strike price, expiration date, all that. Preferably with time we're gonna do a random comment picker in the morning and see how we are stacking up and it looks like we kind of made a comeback here so post the plays and shout out to everyone who has but right off the bat as far as what we're gonna get this week again a ton of economic data we're gonna talk about that and even this weekend we got a couple of things overseas from turkey and then also china what's going on there as well as a couple of updates from the supply chains and don't forget friday was a very big day we're gonna talk about that but you also got to hear from Powell he talked about tapering and inflation Yellen even made some comments over the weekend as well as the political stuff but like we said this is going to be the busiest week for earnings you're going to be getting Apple Amazon Google Microsoft Facebook Twitter Alibaba the CME group 3M Caterpillar Spotify Gilead Merck MasterCard Visa McDonald's Coca-Cola Starbucks Boeing GE GM Ford Boeing and XOM so this is covering a a ton of different industries. There is a lot that we're looking for with tech. Again, this is our first pretty picture here. This is just what you saw from Snapchat. We've talked about the Grim Reaper many times, but you pretty much saw it on Snapchat. This was the largest single day drop for the company. And if you were looking at the board on Friday, if you looked anywhere from Shopify, Amazon, Facebook, even, even Facebook is hanging out at that 100 day low over here. It is a very key moment. What they said with their guidance, what's going on with inflation, supply chain, it is going to be very key, but might I remind you here, for the most part, about 80% of the earnings have surprised and most of the companies have gotten upgraded so far. So depending on what we get from this earnings, especially those big dogs, it could really guide us coming into an important week there with Powell and the first decision to taper. But besides the earnings, again, there's going to be those headlines on Turkey. There was a lot going on there. Their currency even weakened. We will talk about that, but that's going to come up in the headlines and then you're going to get a lot of other countries, the ECB, Japan, and Canada. They have interest rate decisions. They are not expected to move, but Brazil, they are also expected to raise rates. Again, tie this into the context that we saw last week with surprise rate hikes. That is going to be key. But then as far as the economic data, we're going to be getting the PCE. And remember, this is the inflation indicator that the Fed looks at. This is a week before we get that FOMC. So watch out for that. Then we're going to get personal income, durable goods, the U.S. GDP estimate the Dallas Fed numbers, I believe even Chicago Fed, then the new and pending home sales, as well as the Case Shiller home prices, consumer sentiment, and a couple of other things. But like I'm saying, you're going to get a lot of economic data, but you also have some of the bigger earnings. So how the market moves this week, 
and how we get ready, that is going to be the key to watch. But then, based on some of the cues we got from last week on Friday, watch out for this SPAC meme wave. We saw a little bit of that on Friday, and here's another pretty picture. This is kind of showing you the yield curve is getting interesting again, and I've shown you the 10-year break-evens, but now the shorter end of the curve with the five-year, that is starting to rise, but you've been getting way more mentions on the yield curve as is late, so when we get to the bonds, we're going to talk about that, but you will probably see some more and more headlines as as we get into the coming weeks talking about the yield curve and then crypto remember we're coming off of a very solid week for bitcoin and ethereum even over the weekend shiba coin made some headlines with now two out of like the 10 top cryptos are doggy coin so yeah but don't get distracted we got a lot of stuff with earnings but there is still a lot of stuff that we saw on friday so i hope you're ready but coming into the company news and events now here's with turkey what ended up happening they expelled all g10 ambassadors including the united states in Germany over the request. Uh, all G10 people, they made a request for Osman Kavala, a philanthropist and businessman who was potentially involved, or that's what the president of Turkey Erdogan thinks, in the 2016 coup attempt. So it is a very unprecedented move. Even the lira again from last week, they were doing a lot of stuff with inflation. They have 19% inflation, but they did say it was transitory. However, this is probably going to wreak havoc on the Turkish currency. It's already happening. The question is how big or how bad does this get in now, does this spread into anything else this week? But that is going to be a definite key to watch. So watch out for that. Then another one, this one could potentially be one of these issues that we see come in here in the last half of the year. But China now, they're expecting another COVID outbreak to worsen. They already have one that's spread across 11 provinces and they have instructed those provinces to enter emergency mode. So remember, we've already seen this a couple of times this year with some of the ports and how that's had a delayed effect if you want to kind of tie it in. But this will definitely be a key to watch. There's a lot just going on over there and we've been watching so watch out for that and then Janet Yellen uh, she had a CNN interview over the weekend and she said that she expects prices to increase and remain high through the first half of 2022 and then she even said that the current situation of pricing and increased prices reflects temporary pain and she rejects the criticism that the U.S. risks losing control of inflation it was kind of a hot topic this week because Jack Dorsey uh, CEO of Twitter and Square he tweeted that hyperinflation will hit the U.S. and the rest of the world so there was a lot of talk about that this weekend and then coming into some company news here a federal judge ruled that J&J &J cannot immediately halt lawsuits related to the talc baby powder so they just settled that case but they may be exposed to future cases so we'll watch how that plays out tomorrow then some updates on the political side there was quite a few this weekend but Biden is meeting with Manchkin and Schumer to finish the bill agreement to hopefully get one of those Democrats that hasn't been on board in alignment so we'll see and then there was also an update of of Democrats scaling back their drug price ambitions to make the deal a little bit more attractive. So that was key. And then kind of out of left field, or it surprised a lot of people, but Pelosi said that she is open for Democrats to use the budget reconciliation to avert a default. Again, they've been opposed to that for quite some time. So there's still a little updates. But remember that whole debt ceiling situation is going to come back here in a few weeks. So watch out for that. Then coming into Facebook, uh, this was a company study that they did, but they did a new user test in India. And the conclusion was that it led users to gore and fake news in just 21 days. Essentially, they said... If you think the content problem in the United States is bad, in some of the other countries around the world, it is even worse. So this was interesting. Again, Facebook has just been getting hammered over the last few months with all of these different studies, social stuff. Now the earnings with Snapchat and even what they said with the Apple stuff. So their earnings is tomorrow. We're going to see what happens. And then coming into the supply chain stuff, uh, Long Beach, they're changing a very long standing rule just temporarily, but they're easing the rules on stacking the containers there to four containers instead of two so this should be some good news here we'll keep watching that and then to finish it off with some company news here uh on semiconductors they're exploring the potential sale of some of the assets they acquired in a 2019 uh purchase of wi-fi chip maker quantena so we'll see how that plays out i believe they already reported here but watch them again all of the chip makers this week even what they're coming off of intel last week those will be key and then this one i want to see if it's going to affect this stock they've already had a uh, pretty nice earnings run up here but walmart they are recalling an aromatherapy spray because of a possible presence of a rare bacteria and there are already two reports of death so that one's interesting there and then finally we saw this one right at Friday at Bristol Myers they are said to have made a takeover attempt for Arfina or Arena Pharmaceuticals AUPH 
Both companies refused to comment, so we'll see how this plays out on Monday. But there's going to be a lot of moving pieces here. We need to watch what's going to happen with earnings. It's not going to take long to get our answer on Monday, so make sure you got the helmet on, and I hope you're ready. But that is pretty much it. So let us get into the plays. <laughs> So right off the bat, I got three or four different stocks. Actually, a lot that I'm going to be looking at. I got some from the pre-earnings run-up, companies that haven't reported yet. And again, all of this SPAC meme stuff that we saw last week, I think there is going to be a lot of opportunity. And I'll say this now with earnings and all of these companies, you don't have to play them. And so far this season, we have seen a lot of earnings continuation. So essentially, a day or two after earnings, there might be a very good opportunity to play. So you don't have to gamble too much predicting if it's going to be good or bad but given what we saw on Friday with Snapchat and depending on what these companies say there could be a lot of surprises but the first play I'm going to be going for is NVIDIA we had these last week but they held up very nice there's still a lot of time for their earnings so this is an earnings run-up play and then you got that big move on Intel and it kind of continued 10% on Friday I would definitely keep my eye on them especially too if the market is bullish tomorrow depending on how things play out because again Friday was a little bit weird because of the Snapchat stuff, they might get some steam. And then I would also be watching AMD as well because they got to eat Intel's lunch. They were doing good. That play is also one, but they are going to report a lot more sooner than NVIDIA. So keep that in mind. As far as the play, I'm still holding this 250 call for December. They kind of chilled out a little bit on Friday. So this is where some of the out of the monies might calm down. Just going to ride this out. And like I said earlier, I may want to just sell this into the run-up and then roll over to a cheaper play right before earnings but it all depends on how it plays and how it moves so watch out for them then the second play uh d walk again the spac the trump hype it should still be there again you got two days in a row there was a ton of halts on friday and you saw a lot of other companies even like phun so there was a lot of different things but even headlines over the weekend that donald trump will own uh more than 55 percent of the company post merger so we'll see how this gets factored and interpreted but then also what we saw on friday this was the craziness again we kind of saw a return of the meme run but watch Benny and ZGYH we made a play on ZGYH we got a hundred shares of them but Dwalk and Fun were constantly getting halted on Friday people started rushing to a lot of other names and the two that won here was Benny and ZGYH and it's because these are SPACs but it has the same CEO as the Dwalk spec so people were just buying it just to buy it but they were running so keep my eyes on that one just in case that goes crazy again it's a little bit out there of a play but you could even see what I did I grabbed a hundred shares at a 1136 again if it's a SPAC usually the floor is about ten dollars so my idea here was you could go in with a hundred shares even then as we played it even though I dropped my loss comes down to 87 so it's shares small share strategy I don't know if there's options on this but the point is if you're closer to the floor like Dwalk was at 40 and it's a SPAC that's a little bit more risky in this case the risk is somewhat limited but that's why I still kept it small didn't have to bet the bank on it again if you do see these plays tomorrow just be very cautious and the best thing you could do is have a plan in mind. And like we talked about, a really small position. I mean, we only have like 10 shares on DWOC. It could still do a lot of damage for you. So keep that in mind. And then finally... This one might be my favorite earnings play. Again, there's going to be a lot to focus on tomorrow, but watch GM and Ford. They have their earnings this week. The Tesla numbers were good, but there's also just a lot riding on the line for these two companies, so it could be very big. I like Ford a little bit more, so we're going to watch how they play out, but this one could be a good earnings run-up, so I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on them. But those are going to be the main plays as far as everything else. Uh, it's going to be one I'm going to be watching. The only other play I made on Friday, I grabbed 100 shares of Arena. This was after hours. They had that buyout news with Bristol Myers. So want to see how that one plays out. We're going to be watching that. Otherwise, it's going to be managing the other plays we have. And I did sell out of that Netflix. So I would watch them. They This is one of those earnings continuations we talked about. But we sold out of that one leap. About 50% got about like $2,000 or 1500 profit. So not too bad. But going to be watching how they play out. Again, NVIDIA, like we said, they're already at the high. They're doing very good. And their earnings is a lot later. So watch them. Amazon, this one will be key again they haven't moved too much since their last earnings so gonna be watching that one I don't know if even selling premium might be good on that so watch out for them and then snapchat what you saw Friday was their biggest down day in history the real question from here is how does it digest it's gonna have a little digestion tomorrow but then after Facebook we'll probably get the real story and then just wait for the continuation again two or three days later we have seen some moves so watch out for that then Walmart I'm really liking I don't know if that news is going to affect them but they've already had a pretty 
epic run up here and you see they're towards the higher end of their 180 day range kind of where they were at the beginning of the year so i think this earnings can be key the guidance has been confusing so watch out for that then roblox uh they were doing good and on some of the good days they were dropping and then lately they've kind of been picking up here i would just watch out for them especially as we get closer to their earnings uh, same thing with airbnb but they slipped a little but these are some of our consumer earnings run-up plays i'd be watching for then shopify i think they got smashed on friday again amazon did do bad as well too but not as much they were kind of leading the way but i think shopify giving companies do advertise and what we got with snap i think they could also be a little bit vulnerable so watch them and then finally mcdonald's and home depot mcdonald's has been slipping but hd been on an absolute tear all the way to all-time high so i would definitely watch out for these we kind of missed the hd but i think mcdonald's could be a good one but even coming into earnings hd could be a very very interesting one so watch out for them and then finally coming into tlt in the dollar you saw a nice move here we're still at our equilibrium but then this isn't good as long as the five year is coming up again what we talked about with the break evens this is the 10 year but this is the five year now so in the last week or two the phenomena has been tlt has been staying here but the short end of the curve is rising, especially as we're getting into Powell. So that is probably going to take over the headlines. I would watch the dollar. You saw it slip a little, but it's still a little strong. Again, in the last couple weeks as the dollar was going up, a lot of those currencies were weakened. But lately, those surprise rate hikes from all over the world, that has led those currencies to get a little stronger. So we're still at a key position. Again, I think after this earnings here and this economic data, you might get your first step forward. And then by the end of Powell next week, you are probably going to get our confirmation on the dollar of bonds for the end of the year. So I hope you're ready. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you're healthy, ready to go. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shine. I need you to remember second chances come to those that are open to it. But the co loves you. I love you. I'm going to see you in the morning. Let's go.